Well, I'm here in uh, Jason McHugh's Burning Man Windstar, and we're on our way to the set of uh, Team America. But I thought maybe I could ask Jason some questions about Cannibal, the musical, and... Uh, yes. And uh, project. What, um, what was the most difficult thing about making your own damn movie? Um, the most difficult thing about making our own damn movie, I think, was originally just believing that we could make our own damn movie. That's the hardest part, is believing in yourself, then getting other people to believe in you. First, it started as a joke. I mean, that's the other thing, is jokes do come true. That's the other thing, is we started off as a prank and a way to, for Trey to kind of get back at his ex fiance um, and then people really liked this fake preview that we made, and they were like, well, when's the movie coming out? Now, yes. uh, how'd you get the money to make that movie? Cannibal the Musical? Yeah, if you don't mind. I don't. It. You know, um, well, we got it any way we could. Uh, starting with, you know, getting people like my grandmother to be an investor. Um, but you hear, well, here's the story. Uh, Virgil Grillo, who was the chairman of the CU Film Department, saw the, pre the fake preview for Cannibal the Musical, and he loved it. And he was like, you know what? I think I can raise $100,000 for your guys' film. And we were ecstatic. And we knew how to make a movie at that time, but we didn't know how to put together a business plan. We didn't know anything about creating companies. We didn't know. We knew how to make a movie, but we didn't know anything about the business of making a movie. So what we did was four of us created the Avenging Conscience Productions, and we just hit the books. We bought every book that we could possibly possibly find about making low budget features um, and we read them and we traded information and we just figured it out. How did you record the music? <laughs> well okay so we record, Trey wrote all the songs just in the keyboard and then he worked with a guy um, from University of Denver um, to bring in the string instruments and a banjo and orchestra and some of the backup singers. Did you have to pay for these folks? Were you able to... We had to pay for some of those folks. We got a lot of people volunteering. The only thing we really paid for, you know, for Cannibal the Musical was some of the music recording and some of the, the amazing special effects. We didn't pay for the, the fake beards, but we paid for the blood effects. Uh -huh. I'll, tell, I'll say this, the hardest part that's always overlooked by people who are making a low-budget movie is sound. Nobody ever gets proper sound quality, and we worked really hard at it, and it, it was still one of the most difficult parts of the movie. But, you know, um, having a good sound man and or woman with just somebody who knows what they're doing with yeah. sound, it's yeah. really important because it can make all the difference in your movie. It's, it's a crucial thing. Don't forget good sound. Um, yeah, we've had crappy sound forever. Hard. Here we are. Perfect. Wow. There's Mr. and Mrs. Stone. <laughs> there they are. The proud cool. parents. You're probably not going to get to film the, mer the little puppets they have here since this is a Paramount set. Oh. I got to say, actually, one of the first big major sets that we worked on was a Universal set where Trey was directing like Sylvester Stallone, Steven Spielberg, the Zuckers. Um, James Cameron, uh, Michael J. Fox. I mean, I just name dropped for days. And I was taking little pictures of him because I thought his grandparents would like that. Well, I took a picture of him fully clothed in an office with uh, Brian Graydon, Brian Grazier, excuse me, oh. Brian Grazier. And um, we got busted for, for shooting these people in their office because it was uh, illegal and off limits. But later I actually stole the film back and they found out and um, I got fired because I stole film of Trey in an office with grown men. For his so you just got to be careful. Like, don't get busted on Team America. These big studio people, they're <laughs> very anal. Mr. Parker, do you mind if I film you while you're no, on the, behind the while scene? I'm eating. Is it okay? <laughs> yeah. what, what exactly are you eating today, Mr. Parker? I don't know. This is all part of the make your own damn movie, just in case I don't get any uh, New York Times they interfered with my uh, interview yesterday. This is how you get to eat when you make big Paramount movies. Man, oh yeah. man, that is nice. Yeah. Usually during lunchtime we go and look at the footage we shot the day, you know, the day before. It'll all be in. And we either get really mad at ourselves that we didn't get enough or we get stoked on funny things. Excellent. But more often than not we get mad. That's it. <laughs> well, while we are walking, um, any uh, the, the purpose of this exercise is to try to, you know, be a textbook, a, a visual right. textbook for uh, young people making their own damn movies. In, in, in a general sense, uh, what, what kind of advice do you have for uh, someone trying to make his or her its own damn movie? 
You know, for us, it was just always about, uh, because there's so much stuff out there, you know, it was like, because, you know, we were, we started making stuff right at the same time where Avids came out and video cameras got small and, you know, everyone is out there making their own damn movie. I mean, you know, there's, there's millions of people out there making things. And so it was all a matter of trying to make something that no one else was making, you know? It's just like any kind of business venture. You gotta, uh, you know, if you think, you can't really, we, we ran into a lot of people that were like, yeah, I'm gonna make a movie and it's gonna be this, uh, you know, horror thriller that I'm gonna do mm -hmm. on my video camera, but it'll be so great. And it's just like, you're, you're not gonna compete with, <laughs> you know, which was why it's sort of easier to do for us. I mean, I think we're lucky that we, we do comedy because it, in comedy, it's just sort of, you can grab people's attention no matter what your medium is. And uh, it's a lot harder for people that want to, uh, you know, really make a serious drama movie because it's just, it's tough to do when all those movies are about is sort of looking good and great acting and flawless and, you know, so I think we had an easier time because of, you know, the content. You know, it, it was like, you know, it's always about playing up on, uh, you know, using your uh, your disadvantages, you know, it was like, okay, well, this is going to look cheap and shitty, so let's make it funny that it's cheap and yep. shitty. You know, and actually that's, we've based our entire careers on now. <laughs> now here we are making a cheap, shitty, you know, this whole movie we're working on now, the whole joke is how really crappy it all is and how, how you know, the puppets can't do what you want them to do. That's the joke, and yet now it's, you know, a $35 million movie. <laughs> but, well, you know, I think there's hope for trauma, yeah. thanks to you yeah. guys. When you're making your own damn movie, usually you're making it one little piece at a time. Excuse me, man. You're, uh -huh. you're right. making it, you're basically, you're making it, whenever you have money, you're making a little more of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it takes years. Whereas you know, a student movie, it's like you have 12 weeks, you have this much money, and sure, sometimes they go over, but for the most part, you've got a set amount of time and a set amount of money. When you're making your own stuff, you're just, whenever you get money, you're making a little more of it. So I don't ever remember a feeling of, okay, today we are done, except being sort of at the premiere one night and going, oh, I guess, I guess we're done. <laughs> you know, it wasn't like, it was never a hard date. There's all these little things that, well, we still got to do this, and we still got to do that, and this is still coming. What do you think the biggest lesson that you learned from a Cannibal the Musical? If there <laughs> either. <laughs> well, one of the big lessons we learned was to hire a location manager. And we would just go out and kind of drive around and find our own locations. Right. Since then, we just kind of hire a location manager who goes out and finds where you should shoot before we actually shoot it. I don't even remember making Cannibal the Musical. I mean, it was a whole nother life. It was just like... That, that whole, like, we're just, we used to be cool and now we're just Hollywood douchebags, basically, because, you know, now we're rich and we're, like, kind of mild celebrities and we just we suck now, so. Yeah. Well, what do you think of the live-action Thunderbirds? Uh, well, I haven't seen it. But what about uh, this, uh, this ad, for that example? That speaks for itself. I assume I mean, it's going to suck. Don't what, see this guy, movie. What, what is it that, wait, I, have I mean, first of all, it's, it's, my it's a bunch of kids. Yeah, yeah, Obviously, yeah, yeah, they're, you know, absolutely. selling it to kids. Thank you, though, man. I really appreciate it. It's a bunch of kids having it. But really, the whole ad as a whole looks like an ad for, like, Kitty Land. Like, come down to Kitty Land and have a great time. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's for that's then terrible. the Thunderbirds are obviously sacred to you guys, huh? Well, not really. Not really. <laughs> no, come on, no. I mean, come on. What is that? I agree. It looks like come shite. On. I'm Jesus with you Christ. 100%. Why would they do that? Why would they want to do the... Because uh... they're fuckheads. Why'd you want to do that, the Thunderbirds? The only good thing about Thunderbirds... What? The puppets. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, precisely. Did you ever give up hope as a filmmaker? Today. Uh, no, come just on. today on the set of our new hit film, Team America, I completely gave up hope. At, it was about 9.45. I'm, I'm not kidding. It happened during the South Park movie, too, but the whole last month and a half has been about giving up hope. Like, we just, it's, it's, it's horrible and brutal. And, so, and the thing is, it's not even in a way that's like the Hollywood machine at all, because we're really being pretty well left alone, and, you know, it's just so brutal to try to make a movie at all and you know we forget that you know and it's like try to remember back to those days where you were making a movie just because it was fun yeah. i can't I imagine why we would have done that we we started making this movie and then we got totally screwed in our deal and at one point paramount said we're not making the movie unless you guys do it for free 
So we're not making any money on this movie. And so we are basically making an independent film again. It's just with studio money. But, um, I'm making just as much as I did off Factor. But, that's, but then when you're here, you know, at 2 in the morning pulling your hair out because you can't figure out, you know, how this scene's going to go with that scene and you've been over it a million billion times and you're just like, why are we doing this? We hate it. We hate, we hate making movies. Make your own damn movie. We hate it. There's a time where you really love making your, your own damn movie and that's right before you start shooting. That's basically like you get this idea and you're like, I think we're going to be able to go do this. Come on, gang, we're going to put on a show and it's great. And then you go, ugh, and then the production goes on and on. And you get kicked in the balls over and you compromise and it all. It's all it's just it's a series of compromises from day to day, week to week. You yeah. basically have something in your mind. This is what the movie should be. And then every day is just, well, it's okay, well, we can't do that. We can have, okay, well, there can't be five Korean soldiers. Can we, can we have three? We can have two. Okay, two. Well, their faces don't move for this puppet movie. Or, you know. Or it's like, okay, we want to shoot a car chase through L.A. Well, the cars, we only got one car. Okay, well, it's one car going through, you know what I mean? It's like every time you make a movie, that's all you do. You just compromise from the day you get the idea until it's done. Yeah. As, I'm, as I'm talking now, we're, what, 10 weeks into production? Yeah, and 10, and weeks. 10 weeks into production and about two years into the entire movie, and we just hate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid. And we don't understand. I mean, and now, we, and it's even weirder now because now... We're rich. I mean, we don't need any more money, and we still Dan, just then work our asses off for free. It's I don't cool. know why we do it. I really don't. Because I'm not, we're not exaggerating. We hate it. We hate it. <laughs> like, now. And maybe, you know, sure enough, with the South Park movie, we were in the same boat. We were just like, by the, you know, at the end of that movie, we were just like, oh, I'll never make a movie again. And of course it's nice when the movie comes out and people respond to it, you know, and it's like, okay, I've accomplished something and I've, you know, and then sort of after that movie, a few years went by and we were just making South Park, which should be enough, really. I mean, we, we work our asses off on that show and we feel, and we love that show and we're proud of that show, but for some reason we had to go make a puppy movie. That's the only good part about making a movie for a series. We have good food. We have good lunches. You can barely, it's really hard to yeah. keep up being an alcoholic and make a movie at the same time. But I mean, is, is it, you, you, you have total artistic freedom, right? We're basically working for good lunch. Every day we get a free lunch. It's tough. See, if you do the trauma <laughs> stuff, the low budget, you can be a crackhead. Yeah, you do well, that's why, we're trying, that's why we're trying to get back to that. So. <laughs> so there's a big difference between that and here's your movie. You get this many weeks and this much money you, and there's all these unions, so you're dealing with, you know, you've got this much time in the day, and, you know, these people can't do what those people do, and your movie is coming out on October 15th. On October 15th, everyone in the country, or everyone that goes, is going to see your movie. It's not like, I want to make this movie to be fun, I'll see what happens with it, you know, which is a <laughs> lot more, believe me, like, the stress level is completely <laughs> different, you know, because then every day it's like, maybe I won't work on my movie today, you know? We don't have that. <laughs> it's like... You're working again today, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Again, 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 because the movie's coming out. It's around the corner. And, and as you're making the movie, you're getting the interview and, and the, the but you know, and the, and the newspapers start talking about your movie before you're even done shooting. Yeah. Talk, I mean, the pressure is just... Is. Start talking about how good your movie is, and you don't even have a movie and it's not done. <laughs> well, that's better than how bad your movie is. No, they did that that's... with the South Park movie. Yeah, they did that with the Balvin. That was even worse, actually, how yeah. bad the movie is. And you're just like, but well, the movie's not even done. Actually, I was, I was wondering which is worse. Because yeah, I don't know. Maybe it is worse. On the South Park movie, all this press came out during this, because we had just done, like, basketball, you know, so all the press came out before the movie came out going, South Park movie's going to suck, you know, we don't know what it is, but it's going to be terrible. Those guys are over. And so we were reading that, and it sucked, because we were like, oh, we're trying to work on this thing, and everyone's already saying it sucks and it's over. And, and I was thinking, now, now every, because of the South Park movie, everyone's expectations are way high. And it's basically now all the press is these guys' new movies coming out. It's gonna kill. It's gonna be awesome. And I think that's almost worse because it's just like we don't know the middle of it is. <laughs> Can you guys uh, give me money for Poultry Geist? Uh, we you know Poultry Geist? Yeah, I'm doing it finally. <laughs> <laughs> fast food. It's gonna be a fast food uh, project. Uh, Will we get as good a deal as we got on Packer? Pardon? Good as deal as we got on Packer? Well, uh, hey, I know I need money from you guys. In other words, I'm trying, I want to direct it. I'm, I'm oh, seriously, oh, I can't, I'm trying to raise money. For poultry guys? Yeah, it's $350,000, 35 we'll give millimeter. You, we'll yeah. give you some money. We're gonna, we'll give you 50% of what we made on Cannibal. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jason says we've been sending you checks. <laughs> really? Yeah. For what? Troma has actually sent us checks for, for Cannibal. Really? It's not a lot yet, but it, it's in the positive. It it's pretty fucking impressive, I have to say. 
Well, so, well, at any rate, uh, if you have any, I, I want to make, I want, I need an investor in uh, poultry guys. Seriously, I'm putting up half of it. You know what? My own money. So I'll try guys. to find you one. <laughs> oh, if uh, that's my bush we're on now, uh, what what do you think? Uh, would do you think it's a good time to put that on now, or what what you thought about all that? Hmm. No, maybe about the same as it was when it came on. Because it doesn't really. That's my bush. Never really ripped on George Bush all that much. It's no, like ripped on sitcoms. Yeah. So I don't think it would matter any bit. I don't think that. Or Gasmo. Now, what what? What do you think happened with the uh, rating board there? What I mean, this is a movie that had no sex or violence and yeah. it was kind of romantic. Yeah. What what were they? Th why did you have that trouble? They just you know the problem was what we learned later when because we were still independent filmmakers then and we learned that basically, you know, the ratings board just works for the studios. So it was basically like because we didn't have a studio behind us, we had nobody to fight for us. So mm -hmm. it was like you just go in as an independent filmmaker and they're like NC17 and you're like. Oh, but can I? What what can I change? And they're like, well, we can't tell you what to change because that makes us a censorship group. And you're like, well, okay, like just send us another cut. But when you're making an independent film, you can't afford to get another Avid and get another, you know, and spend time to, you know, yeah. to pay all that money again to cut it again. And by the way, and, uh, they used to tell us that. They used to tell us that after we'd give them the answer print, we'd give them the print, yeah. married print, and yeah. they'd tell us, okay, now you got to start chopping right, away. Right. As soon as we did our first big studio movie with South Park. It was like, okay, NC-17. It was like, what? And they're like, you, okay, so, uh, and the studio was like, you need to change this, 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 and this. And it was like, they told you? And like, yeah. <laughs> and it was like, then it's because they had a studio going, and the studio yeah. was just going, we need it to be rated R. And they're like, okay, well, well let's work together. And, then, you know, it was just, it's, it's sick. It's yeah. corrupt. What, so, uh, name actors, do you think it's still Im important? Uh, I mean, do you have to have name actors in movies these days? Is that a must? If you want to make any money, yeah. But really? it's important to make a good movie, but they're kind of not the same thing. We don't have any actors in our movie that we're doing right now. We just have puppets. So we'll see. Maybe we'll make zero dollars. So yeah, <laughs> this be a good, we might make zero dollars. Any major advice uh, that you would have for first-time students or filmmakers or people trying to make their own damn movie? No, do you think the second movie is harder to make than the first movie? Uh, They're all hard. Yeah. I just stick with math and science. And. Uh, I think a lot of people yeah, just probably, do that. A lot of people probably already know this, but it's basically uh, it's it's getting the right group of people around you, you know. And it's basically once you find people that you can work with, it's it's uh, keeping hold of those people because you know it's basically like you you sort of get your little family of uh, and you know if you if you've got enough smart people around you, it makes it a lot easier. We put all these we put all these fuckers through hell too. Yeah. We drag no. everyone down through hell with us. As long as you have nice, smart people to go through uh, all with you, yeah. then it's totally fun. You know? Yeah. And it's all right. Do you guys ever foresee doing your own damn separate things, or have you already done that? Or? Do, I don't think we're doing anything after this. Yeah. We're doing this movie. That's it. This and more a couple. We got to take two more runs of South Park, and then we're getting the fuck out of here. I'm, I'm no, going to have no uh, I'm going to have some kids. No more. <laughs> what you? I'm going to have some kids, and I'm not going to do that with Trey. Yeah. <laughs> Are you married? No, but I'm going to get married and have some kids oh, and that won't be with Ray. No, we're going to go hang out and watch each other. We're going to get drunk and watch each other kids play with each other. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's our next project. Oh, that, that is the most depressing. No, that's that. great. That's